Casing functions, types and design. Functions of casing. The functions of casing may be summarized as follows. 1. To keep the hole open and to provide support for weak, vulnerable or fractured formations. In the latter case, if the hole is left uncased, the formation may cave in and re-drilling of the hole will then become necessary. 2. To isolate porous media with different fluid pressure regimes from contaminating the pay zone. This is basically achieved through the combined presence of cement and casing. Therefore, production from a specific zone can be achieved. 3. To prevent contamination of near-surface freshwater zones. 4. To provide a passage for hydrocarbon fluids, most production operations are carried out through special tubings which are run inside the casing. 5. To provide a suitable connection for the wellhead equipment and later the Christmas tree. The casing also serves to connect the blowout prevention equipment box, which is used to control the well while drilling. 6. To provide a hole of known diameter and depth to facilitate the running of testing and completion equipment. Types of casing. In practice, it would be much cheaper to drill a hole to total depth, TD, probably with a small diameter drill bit, and then case the hole from surface to TD. However, the presence of high-pressured zones at different depths along the wellbore, and the presence of weak, unconsolidated formations or sloughing, shaly zones, necessitates running casing to seal off these troublesome zones and to allow the drilling to TD. Thus, different sizes of casing are employed and this arrangement gives a tapered shape to the finished well. The types of casing currently in use are as follows. 1. Stove pipe. Stove pipe, or marine conductor, or foundation pile for offshore drilling, is run to prevent washouts of near-surface unconsolidated formations, to provide a circulation system for the drilling mud and to ensure the stability of the ground surface upon which the rig is sited. This pipe does not usually carry any weight from the wellhead equipment and can be driven into the ground or seabed with a pile driver. A typical size for a stove pipe ranges from 26 inches to 42 inches. 2. Conductor pipe. Conductor pipe is run from the surface to a shallow depth to protect near-surface unconsolidated formations, seal off shallow water zones, provide protection against shallow gas flows, and provide a conduit for the drilling mud. One or more bops may be mounted on this casing or a diverter system if the setting depth of the conductor pipe is shallow. In the Middle East, a typical size for a conductor pipe is either 18 and 5 8 inches, 473 mm, or 20 inches, 508 mm. In North Sea exploration wells, the size of the conductor pipe is usually 26 or 30 and also in most of Iraqi wells. Conductor pipe is always cemented to surface. It is used to support subsequent casing strings and wellhead equipment or alternatively the pipe is cut off at the surface after setting the surface casing. 3. Surface casing. Surface casing is run to prevent caving of weak formations that are encountered at shallow depths. This casing should be set in competent rocks such as hard limestone. This will ensure that formations at the casing shoe will not fracture at the high hydrostatic pressures which may be encountered later. The surface casing also serves to provide protection against shallow blowouts, hence bops are connected to the top of this string. 
the setting depth of this casing string is chosen so that troublesome formations, thief zones, water sands, shallow hydrocarbon zones and build-up sections of deviated wells may be protected. The typical size of this casing is 13 and 3 8 inches, 240 mm, in the Middle East and 18 and 5 8 inches, or 20 inches, in North Sea operations. 5. Production casing. Production casing is the last casing string. It is run to isolate producing zones, to provide reservoir fluid control and to permit selective production in multi-zone production. This is the string through which the well will be completed. The usual sizes of this string are 4 and a half, 5 and 7 inches. 6. Liners. A liner is a string of casing that does not reach the surface. Liners are hung on the intermediate casing by use of a liner hanger. In liner completions both the liner and the intermediate casing act as the production string. Because a liner is set at the bottom and hung from the intermediate casing, the major design criterion for a liner is usually the ability to withstand the maximum expected collapse pressure. Types of liners Basic liner systems are shown in figure below. 1. Drilling liners are used to isolate lost circulation or abnormally pressured zones to permit deeper drilling. 2. Production liners are run instead of a full casing to provide isolation across the production or injection zones. 3. The tie-back liner is a section of casing extending upwards from the top of an existing liner to the surface. It may or may not be cemented in place. 4. The scab liner is a section of casing that does not reach the surface. It is used to repair existing damaged casing. It is normally sealed with packers at top and bottom and, in some cases, is also cemented. 5. The scab tie-back liner is a section of casing extending from the top of an existing liner but does reach the surface. The scab tie-back liner is normally cemented in place. Advantages of a liner The main advantages of a production liner are a total costs of the production string are reduced, and running and cementing times are reduced. b. The length of reduced diameter is reduced which allows completing the well with optimum sizes of production tubings. Complete wells with less weight landed on wellheads and surface pipe. A scab liner tie-back provides heavy wall cemented section through salt sections. Permits drilling with tapered drill string. Where rig capacity cannot handle full string. When running heavy 9 and 5 8 casing. The disadvantages of a liner are. A possible leak across a liner hanger, and. B. Difficulty in obtaining a good primary cementation due to the narrow annulus between the liner and the hole. Design criteria. There are three basic forces which the casing is subjected to, collapse, burst and tension. These are the actual forces that exist in the wellbore. They must first be calculated and must be maintained below the casing strength properties. In other words, the collapse pressure must be less than the collapse strength of the casing and so on. Casing should initially be designed for collapse, burst and tension. Refinements to the selected grades and weights should only be attempted after the initial selection is made.